Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here and you enjoy listening to horror stories, please join us by clicking subscribe down below and consider leaving a like on today's video to support the channel. Thank you. Let's begin. Ex-girlfriends and ex-boyfriends, they're a huge problem. But I never expected them to be such a problem that they would be a kill ya kind of problem. When I was 18, I was dating a girl called Abby. She seemed like your typical high school girl, a girl that had just come out of high school. She had that cheerleader vibe about her. It drew me in, and of course she was cute, she was attractive, and she was that bubbly ball of energy, but I didn't realize that she was a package. A package that was all in one. I didn't understand at the time, but Abby brought with her a pretty haunting past. A past where she had been in abusive relationships. She had no say in what she did or what she said. He controlled her life and she did not want it to go that far. While I can describe Abby and talk about her relationship with her ex, I think it's best not to. I respect her privacy. When I was dating her, I remember our first ever date. We had a rather weird encounter, because we didn't know each other, and we had arranged a date through college. One of her friends named Rachel had come up to me during one of the lectures. She handed me a note which read, Hey, my friend thinks you're cute. Here's her number. This is the type of thing that happens in men's dreams, but I am relatively good looking and over six feet tall, so I guess I hit the jackpot. When I got that note, I had no idea who the girl was, but the girl who handed it to me was cute, so I figured her friend would be too. I decided to text the number saying, quote, Hey, who is this? Your friend gave it to me. Abby replied a day later saying, Oh, hee hee, I'm so sorry, she loves playing pranks. I didn't realize that this was Abby, the girl I only sat around three rows below. Whenever I looked up or got up to leave the hall, she would always be staring at me. I noticed this, and it made me feel kind of good. At first, I thought maybe I had a booger hanging out of my nose, maybe I had toilet roll hanging from my shoe, maybe there was something negative as to why she was staring at me, but after a while, I soon realized that the staring was too often, too frequent, to be just a anomaly. anomaly. Once I started looking back, she would smile, but she would get kind of shy and then just look away. I didn't know whether I wanted to pursue things with Abby. I'd heard rumors about her boyfriend and how he was supposedly not treating her very nice, to put it lightly. I don't know if I should really go into details either, but to give you some quick context, he was arrested four times, three of which were for hurting her. Again, we'll not go into detail out of respect and privacy. I was reluctant to go on a date with her because I knew that her ex-boyfriend was possibly around the corner, but there's hesitation, there's assumptions, and then there's outright unexpected. The first date we went on was a relaxing date. Nothing too impressive, nothing too fancy. We grabbed homemade sandwiches, one of those sandwich bars, kind of like Subway, but one that's family run and actually has fresh, real food without chemical fillers. As we were eating our food, we were sat on one of those stool things it's kind of like a bar, except there was no alcohol in this sandwich store. We were eating, and I noticed Abby looking at someone behind me. 
I turned around, and I had no idea who it was, as there was over seven or eight people there. Most of them were sat down eating a sandwich, and two guys were stood in the corner, one on his phone and the other just with his hands in his jacket pockets, doing nothing out of the ordinary. She kept glancing over my shoulder, and it made me feel a little on edge. In the moment, I didn't think of her ex-boyfriend. I thought of perhaps someone walking towards us to ask for some napkins, or to ask us what sandwich we ordered, or just a waiter saying, hey, can I get you anything else? It was bugging me that she kept doing this, so eventually I brought it up with her. Quote, hey, what are you looking at? Oh, nothing. <laughs> that guy was doing something stupid, so I don't know why, but it caught my attention. I didn't believe what she had to say for a second. She had been looking over my shoulder for a good three minutes. You're telling me this guy's pulling dumb faces, or doing backflips behind me? All while I have no idea? I turned around at least four times, and every time nothing was happening. The same people were eating their sandwiches, and the same two guys were in the corner, looking at one of their phones. What was she looking at? We finished eating, and I felt a bit uncomfortable at this point in the date. I didn't know why she was behaving like this, and I thought maybe she fancied one of the guys behind me. That was my little childhood insecurity coming through. Oh, she's staring over my shoulder, so she must fancy the guy behind me, or have a crush on him. It's a bit messed up the way my brain works, but I can't help it. We made our way outside the sandwich shop, and as we got out there, things took a turn for the worse. A truck pulled up right in front of us, just as we were about to cross from the sidewalk to the centre of the parking lot. It cut right up inches away from us, and I'll be honest, I did not see it coming. The car slash truck must have been pulled up only a few metres up the road, just at the edge of the parking lot. So, when the driver floored it and hit the gas to get up in line with us, we had only maybe a few seconds to respond. My response was to step back, give myself some space, and to grab Abby by her wrist. I pulled her back, but instinctively didn't quite understand what was happening, so kept walking backwards while holding her wrist. I noticed that Abby was acting extremely weird. Okay, so the guy nearly did hit us, and it did seem a bit over the top. However, she started to cry and make these weird squirming sounds. It made me feel a little uncomfortable, and it also made me think, why is she acting like this? So, it's no big deal. It was an accident, he didn't hit us, and he's gonna drive away. Right? Nope. That's not what happened. Instead... The guy shines a gun directly at me, just flexes it, glints it, shows it off, whatever you want to say. He raises it, shows it through the window, and puts it back on the passenger seat. Then, while laughing demonically, he hits the gas and speeds off, with his tires screeching against the road. In those moments that he raised the weapon, I thought he was about to open fire. We had no cover, and our bodies would have taken the bullets. Thank God he decided not to, and I still had to figure out who the heck this mental lunatic was. Abby was shaking and crying. She seemed extremely scared, but she was doing this before he had even showed the weapon, which made everything really weird. In the moment, my adrenaline was pumping like crazy, I started to feel sick and dizzy once it wore off. We went back into the sandwich store, ordered some more drinks, and waited for the police to arrive. Three police cruisers turned up in a matter of three or four minutes, by which time he had left. He being her abusive ex-boyfriend. It turns out that the two guys stood in the corner were her ex-boyfriend's friends, they had been messaging him, saying that she was in this sandwich store on a date with a random guy. 
He turned up and was ready to try and scare us out the front near the parking lot. That's why she kept looking over my shoulder at the two guys stood in the corner seemingly doing nothing just on one of their phones. On that phone they were texting the ex-boyfriend and she recognised both of them from the years that she was with him. It was a pretty surreal experience and I'd never had my life threatened before nor had I ever been involved in a near miss involving a car. I was a bit shook up and decided to stop talking to Abby for a couple of weeks. She started begging me to keep talking, saying that I was the only nice guy she had ever dated. I found this kind of cute, so she started playing on my heartstrings and I did pretty much fall for it. It was a trap though, but not a trap she had intentionally set up, a trap that had been set up by her boyfriend. One that had warning signs all over it. If you go near her, then we'll come near you and we'll ruin your life with the warning signs. The second date we went on, we decided to go swimming. A bit weird, I know, but we figured if we were inside a gymnasium or a swimming pool area, then there's no way her ex could find his way inside of it. Sure enough, he didn't. There were no friends, there were no stalkers, and there was no ex with his weapon or his truck. It was an enjoyable date. We went upstairs afterwards and grabbed some snacks from the vending machines. We had a chat and she opened up a bit more about her ex, saying some of the stuff he did to her. It was pretty sick to be honest, and at times I didn't even believe what she was telling me. I asked her if we could date again, because I was enjoying myself but I told her it's important we stay away from those guys, as it could potentially put my life in danger. Well, I was talking my fate into existence, and deep down I think my subconscious knew what I was getting involved in. After the third date, around a week had passed. The third date we got some food at a restaurant, we went to watch a movie, and we chilled together during a night drive afterwards till 4 o'clock in the morning. We clicked, we made out, and we just bonded. There was a huge spark and I was definitely feeling something for this girl. I was starting to ignore her dark past, without realising that I was about to be dragged straight back into it. A week after that third date, I'm heading home from my job. I work part-time, and I usually come home at around 3pm, sometimes 2.30, on a good day. I notice that there's a truck driving very close to my bumper behind me. I don't recognise it, and it doesn't click in my mind that this is the same truck her ex was driving that he flexed a weapon on. I realise that I was in a deep bunch of trouble when this guy wasn't overtaking, after I pulled over, signalling with my blinkers. What the hell did this guy want, I thought. Had I done something wrong? Had I cut him up? Had I said something? For some reason in that moment, I didn't realise this was her ex, and he was extremely angry. It turns out that this guy had a whole network of friends, or a gang if you can call it that, that were keeping track on her house, watching her, everything she did, people she met, and they were making sure that she did nothing that they didn't like. Meeting me was one of those things, so now they were about to make my life hell. Instead, they were about to send me to hell. Once I finally got home, the truck had followed me all the way, I got out, but I was extremely worried as to what was going on. Still, in this moment, it did not register that this was the same truck that had come inches to us the other month. It was scary, but I thought it was just a random guy who was going to have a go at me for some type of road rage. The guy gets out his truck and I immediately recognise him then, but it's far too late. I realise his gun is in his hand, and it's probably loaded. He raises it and opens fire, emptying the whole lot all over my car. 
The metal protected me. One of the bullets ricochets straight off the concrete drive and goes through my garage door. Not a single bullet hit me. He was awful at shooting. Couldn't even hit a single target. But thank God, because I'd be dead and I wouldn't be here right now if he was a good shot. I started pleading with him, thinking that he had to reload, but he didn't have any more. It was empty, it was all out, and now, my sister who was inside the house started screaming and dialing 911. He had long gone when the police arrived, once again. However, he was tracked down, located and arrested, charged with attempted murder and locked away for decades upon decades. This man is where he belongs. I'm kind of happy I could take some bullets, so that that means Abby can live at least 20-30 years without having to worry about him being out there. But I wouldn't have been so happy if it would have taken my life. We still talk, but it's difficult, and it's complicated. We add a whole new meaning to the term, it's complicated, lol. I've always thought that the best dates are supposed to be filled with laughter, nervous exchanged, and a promise of something beautiful afterwards. Maybe a moonlit walk, or a shared dessert, or just a quiet corner where two people could escape reality. If only for a little while, we could enjoy the date. I'm writing this from my bedroom, replaying the events of tonight. It was my first official date with Hannah, a girl I'd met for a mutual friend at a casual gathering a few weeks ago. She has the kind of energy and laughter that pulls you in, and the most beautiful bright green eyes that I could lose myself in. After a week or two of texting back and forth, sharing our thoughts, our favourite movies and our dreams about travel, I finally worked up the nerve to ask her out. We decided on Wendy's, of all places, because it felt casual, unpretentious, and familiar. I wanted to be somewhere we could sink into good conversation, and why not over greasy burgers and frosty shakes. Leading up to this date, my life felt somewhat boring. I work in a small marketing firm during the day, and spend my nights tinkering with my passion for cars. I've had my fair share of awkward first dates, those moments where you can feel the silence thunderous around you, or your date gives you a polite laugh that sounds more like a pitying chuckle. But with Hannah, it felt different. I anticipated no such moments of awkwardness. Tonight was meant to be the beginning of something wonderful, or so I thought. The evening started off really well, I arrived a few minutes early, keen to ensure I wasn't late. I took a seat facing the door, waiting for her to walk in. When Hannah finally strolled in, looking effortlessly chick in her well-worn hand tee and jeans, my heart did a little backflip. I fumbled a little, trying to put my phone away discreetly, and then our eyes locked. That feeling? Oh, how I wanted to bottle it up forever. Hey, she said. Her voice was warm and inviting. After introducing ourselves, we sat down and ordered a tray of burgers and fries. I could tell that the conversation was flowing so well. We talked about our favourite TV shows, childhood memories, and a shared dream of exploring Europe someday. 
But just as I was about to muster the courage to ask her what her favourite travel destination was, this delightful rhythm was abruptly interrupted. Suddenly, there was a commotion outside. Just outside the Wendy's, two guys were shouting at each other. I initially tried to ignore it, thinking it was just typical late-night rowdiness. But a moment later, the shouting escalated. I could see other customers inside begin to turn their heads and watch, and a few people even rushed to the window to get a better look. Hannah and I looked at each other nervously, as the tension in this Wendy's restaurant started to spread through the air. Then it happened. They burst through the door, two guys who looked like they'd stepped straight out of some cheesy action movie. Adrenaline pumped through me as I instinctively shielded Hannah with my arm, pulling her closer. My heart raced. It was like a scene from a slasher film, where you know that everything is about to go from strange to horrifying. Step away from my girl, you punk, one guy shouted, lunging at the other. The next thing I knew, fists were flying everywhere. I spared an instinctive glance at Hannah, who looked pretty terrified at what was going on. Hannah, we should move, I shouted, not entirely sure if she could hear me over the chaos erupting around us. She nodded, her face was pale, and we began to slide out of the area we were sat. But in the commotion, everything unraveled faster than I could comprehend or react to. One of the guys, fueled by a toxic mix of anger and bravado, swung wildly at the other guy. In a horrifying turn of events that felt like slow motion, his fist missed the intended target and collided with me and Hannah instead. I watched as her head jerked back and she stumbled to the side, surprised and in pain. I yelled out, and these were the moments that my true instincts and adrenaline started to kick in, as if I suddenly was a part of some superhero narrative. For a moment I felt paralysed by fear, she was the one I was there to protect, and the last thing I wanted was for her to get hurt on our first date. With a surge of determination, I charged forward pushing through the crowd that was desperately trying to back away from the chaos rather than intervene. I reached Hannah and grabbed her arm, pulling her away from the thrashing fists that had promised nothing but confusion and rage. With the two fighters caught up in their own world, I managed to slip behind Hannah, shielding her as best I could, while also attempting to direct her towards a safer exit. Come on, we need to get out of here, I urged. Her eyes also reflected fear, but instead of freezing up, Hannah nodded, and together we walked towards the side exit with our heads and our ears tucked in. We were trying to navigate our way past the nightmare. Just as we were about to reach the doorway, I noticed one of the men tripping and falling, elbowing a nearby table and sending a tray of drinks flying. The noise compounded the chaos. For a moment, everything felt surreal. I was hyper aware of the sounds, the shouts, the laughter of spectators not knowing whether to take it seriously, and the metallic tang of adrenaline in the air. I was suddenly overwhelmed by the realisation that this wasn't how dates were supposed to go. Finally, we made it out of the Wendy's, I breathed a sigh of relief once we were outside. The cooler night air rushed to meet me like a wake-up call. But I didn't relax until I saw Hannah was unharmed, save for a red mark on her cheek. I wrapped my arms around her, holding her tightly. Are you okay? I asked. My heart was thumping loudly in my chest. I think so, she said back. That was terrifying. What's wrong with those guys? I glanced over my shoulder to see that the two guys were still throwing punches inside and the frantic energy of the crowd shifted towards the door. 
Lots of people had left by this point, but others were still trying to wait to escape, as the guys constantly were throwing each other across the restaurant. Let's get away from here, I said, leading her down the street. We walked side by side, not quite sure what to say. Our earlier excitement drowned beneath the weight of the chaos as we escaped. As we walked away from the scene, the reality started to sink in. I'd always thought of myself as a protector type, but in that moment I'd been so consumed by fear that it was hard to shake. Yet there was something, another part of me that was proud because I'd acted in the moment. I hadn't stood idly while life turned into a disaster. Once we had walked a fair distance, I looked at Hannah, who was finally starting to catch her breath. I smiled, even as my heart felt heavy. Quote, I never thought a date at Wendy's could turn into an action movie, I joked. She laughed nervously, but then her laughter turned into a full-blown fit of giggles, which was such a relief as I thought she was seriously hurt. Quote, I honestly thought I'd signed up for burgers and fries, not boxing. She touched her cheek. Quote, I can't believe that just happened. Do you think they'll be okay? I hope so. I just wish I'd been faster. The truth was her well-being mattered to me more than some silly tussle. Hey, what do you say we go get a hot chocolate or something instead? Just to calm down. Fair game. I'm up for it. To support my channel please leave a like on the video, please subscribe if this is your first time here and also consider commenting down below to show your support for my channel. Here on this channel I upload every single evening or at least try my hardest to. We also only ever upload brand new stories, you wouldn't have heard these stories on any other channels on YouTube. This channel is family run and has no sponsors or any ties to YouTube networks. So if you want to support a family run YouTube channel, then this is the one for you. Thank you so much guys. As always, I hope you're all doing well and please tune in for tomorrow evening stories. I'll see you then.